Hey guys, Kevin here from lp24audio.com. How you doing? So I got a follow-up video for you on additive synthesis, something we talked about in the last uh, video there where I was showing you in Serum. You can uh, create your own harmonics and wavetables based off of additive synthesis, an old method of creating sound. So let's continue with that idea. I want to uh, be able to show you that you can make almost any sound if you understand some of these fundamental concepts and you can make it using sine waves at different volumes and phases okay so we're gonna talk about this idea that um, in serum bin 1 here means your fundamental frequency generally of any sound you import or wavetable you load for example if I go over here to um, let's go to basic shapes, which are basic subtractive synthesis shapes. If we look at, say, a square wave, okay, look at it by translating it into bins. If you look at bin one, it's usually the loudest, especially in, fun in these fundamental waveforms like square, sine, tri, and saw. In more complex waveforms, this might be lower, but let's start by talking about this is called the fundamental. Everything above it is called a harmonic, and harmonics are multiples of the fundamental. So if I play a note on the keyboard that happens to be uh, 100 hertz, okay, that's my fundamental frequency, and that's the pitch that you perceive. So we would say, okay, 100 hertz is C which it's not, but I can't remember what it is. But 100 hertz is the lowest. And then the next harmonic is 100 hertz times 2. 100 hertz times 3 is the third one. 100 hertz times 4, times 5, times 6, times 7. So those are all the frequencies present in your sound. And as you might remember, we had this French mathematician named Fourier who made up Fourier analysis, which is the fundamental reason we're talking about additive synthesis is because you can break any sound down into at any moment moment in time its sine waves and uh, their amplitudes phases so what's that mean for you well I've created this uh, overly complicated scenario here where we have 12 serums and one is at the fundamental frequency one is at that times two that times three, that times four, that times five, that times six. Okay, so we have essentially 12 serums in a row. Now let me explain to you how I did this and you'll hear the sound. I basically went into this lovely digital waveform called the harmonic series. I, I avoided me having to tune a sine wave manually, but if you go through your wavetable position, that's your fundamental times two, fundamental times three, times four, times five, times six, and on and on up to 24. So I've done that 12 times. Each serum has a setting. So the first track, it's at wavetable one, second track at two, at three, at four, or five. Okay, so we could essentially build a sound. Tell me what you hear when I'm going to fade in each oscillator, each sine wave slowly. So by the time we get to bar seven here we have faded in all uh, 12 oscillators and we have a kind of timbre that you might recognize so let's hear it. okay so it's getting towards a brass tone a trumpet kind of tone and that might be a good way to uh, create a brass sound even though it seems overly complex uh, it will if it re starts to remind you of that then you know okay maybe I can do something with that now the difference between you know just saying okay there's my sound and taking it a step further is we can render this down so if I were to just kind of take the end part which all the harmonics are audible and I rendered it into an audio file well that's what we get in in this waveform here very very small blip in time but let's okay we got this if I just highlight and hit Z okay or Z for you in the States now that's the waveform with all those harmonics present it's one single cycle of it Okay, I, I just chopped off the ends, and then what I did was I dragged it in the serum here, and I made this 
uh, wave table based on that. So not the we don't need the square wave. But what I did is I went in and edited that. Here's the actual waveform I dragged in. And I went and hit plus a couple times. So I got two more custom waveforms. And when you go to that one and you hit here, you can kind of modify you know, the harmonics of each one. And this one, I have different harmonics. Okay, so what happens is I created variations on a theme, so to speak, and my theme being the original additive synth cycle waveform. Okay, now when, when you do something like that and you're able to play with the wavetable position, you essentially customize your sound quite a bit. Oh, I forgot to mention then what I did was highlighted all three and went to morph and did a spectral Okay, which is a way of crossfading harmonically. And that just means it, it varies the sine wave volumes and interpolates between them. Last thing I did, I was trying to make a kind of brass tone because that's the sound we got. Last thing I did was I took this LFO here, we don't need it on that, um, and I dragged it onto wavetable position to get a little bit of harmonic movement in the sound. I also just played with the regular volume envelope and uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, and this envelope as well goes to a cutoff filter. Okay, low pass filter on the cutoff. Added some harmonics with drive, which is just you know a way to essentially when you use distortion, you're adding some harmonic content, right? Same as an EQ, where when you're boosting it, you're adding harmonics. So I was trying to get my sound brighter and a little bit of room never hurt anybody okay so we we're trying to get a little reverb so have a listen when I play this sound okay not the perfect horn and wasn't intended to be but the one thing is it kind of reminds you of it because the harmonics are proper Okay, they're relatively close to a horn. The other thing, a little trick for you, is I took a noise oscillator and I did FM on to those uh, waveforms that we heard. And the reason I did that was because when you, the act of blowing into a horn would, would produce some noise if you're, if you're miking it close enough. And it also affects the timbre a bit randomly. Okay, noise is random frequencies, and when you're doing random frequency FM on a sound, it kind of adds a little bit of humanity to the sound, a little bit of randomness. But hopefully that gives you the idea that um, additive synthesis can be quite, well, one, maybe tedious, but two, potentially worth it, and three, can be very customizable in achieving more acoustic-related timbres. So hope you enjoyed that video. Again, Kevin from LP24Audio.com. Thanks for your support.